where we see gay culture spreading, we see drug culture. And these are components of Western culture. They will not be you know, removed anytime soon because the West looks at Greece and Rome to define itself uh, as a civilization, um, as, as imperialists. And there you have the eugenics, the drugging, the pedophilia, you know, lesbos, the lesbian movements. Um, you, you had, you know, pretty much the beginnings of Neoplatonism, which would then lead to other branches of um, psychology and philosophy and the idea that the people that control the state should control reproduction and all the fertility cults and mystery schools that make sure that happens. And eventually they would turn into, you know, mainstream secret societies, college secret societies, uh, as the enemies of the church, you know, would start um, institutions, colleges in America, like Yale and Stanford and Harvard. And these were eugenicists like David Starr Jordan. These were you know, pagans, and eventually the Jews would take over with finance, and so on. So there is a system of Age of Enlightenment thought um, that says that they're the liberators, and that they're trying to spread democracy, but they're really trying to spread their philosophies, and their philosophies include pederastry, they include using drugs, um, and, and having sex to try to achieve a state of ecstasy to connect with God, that is mysticism, you know, Russian mystics like, you know, Madame Vlatsky, you know, for the people into the New Age, they might not know very many uh, New Age authors or mystics, but when you bring up Vlatsky and Crowley, these are people that people actually look into, the Hermetic Orders, the Golden Dawn, and so on, they've looked into these people, and they're, they're trying to emulate them, and they're doing the same kind of rituals and stupid little experiments uh, that those people did. So we have, you know, the propaganda campaigns and then the IQ tests, you know, which is a way for the governing class to choose certain segments of society um, to be allowed to propagate and thrive and to suppress others. You know, using intelligence testing and city planning, genetic engineering, and covert drugging. So they have an international network that tests around the world, or else they wouldn't be able to gather the data, okay, that they need to make the absurd claims that they have. You know, as far as intelligence and race, nationality, and the relationships they're in. So when you see the the drugs that cause cognitive impairment, the educational disparity, um, the validity of the IQ test as a measure of genetic superiority, you know, is just not there. See, drugs cause cognitive impairment and birth defects that include minor cognitive impairment, okay, MCI. Not to mention, um, Traumatic brain injury, minor brain injuries from concussions, uh, from ghetto cultures, poverty leads to violence, robberies, gangs, fights, you know, and th these things uh, uh, cause a higher occurrence of, you know, brain trauma. Uh, also leads to drug use, and which causes accidents and stuff. So, you know, there's a lot of, a lot more, we see a lot more disabled people and uh, mentally impaired people. Uh, in poor areas, and we see that these areas, you know, uh, tend to be disproportionately people of sub-Saharan African origin. So when we look at the 10 to 20 uh, IQ points, um, you know, difference in from Nigeria to say America, you know, the average, uh, there are many things that explain that away, but of course the people. Uh, in society who control it, the corporations, the elitists, they have a so fucking what attitude. They have a for whatever reason attitude. For whatever reason, these people are not as educated and not as qualified and not as fit to live. 
and it is a losing investment. So when you take a bunch of corporate people trying to decide the direction of humanity and the, you know, the usefulness and the efficacy of, you know, trying to educate people, you know, they have a bottom line attitude, a so fucking what attitude as a result of their erroneous philosophy and lack of sacred morality. So what you basically see is the evolution of the fertility cults, which, you know, became little eugenic clubs um, that do stupid little rituals and play stupid games uh, in memory and to honor their ancestors. You know, they're carrying on the tradition of controlling reproduction and breeding and suppressing the black population, which is basically used as a workforce, you know, f you know, for a certain purpose is cheap labor, which was replaced, as we all know, by immigrants. OK, so then what do you do with all these black people that you never intended to um, make equal? You never tended to give them full citizenship and full rights. You know, well, they do what they've always intended to do with them. They use them to defy the rest of the population and to attack, you know, the morality and to kind of, you know, be a looming threat uh, against white America. You know, what happens, you know, if, if the Jew over empowers the minorities? Well, what will happen to a future of white, for white uh, people? You know, the multiculturalism includes leveraging different ethnic groups and racial groups uh, against each other. Um, that's part of the crony capitalist, you know, tradition, if you will. So, when you look at this thing, right, they use philosophy as a way to unnaturally usurp the, the men who would naturally get the women, they would naturally get the spoils, they would be the most revered people in society, right? This is what naturally happens. So what naturally occurred is those people who are inferior decided to change the scale that we look at people. You know, what do look, women look for in men? You know, what are traits of a, a man, right? And to twist them in a way that allows them to create a system that makes people like them look good. You know, these, these utterly deplorable dogs. It was the indignant knaves, you know, that were hated by the aristocracy and the upper class historically that came together, you know, as a lumpen proletariat um, with the international financiers who many, many of them, you know, just like with the mafia, were from the poorer areas already. So they already had some kind of a relationship and understanding of these kinds of people. So when they became rich, you know, using tre treachery and trickery, they, they reached out to their peers in the ghetto, you know, everything from gypsies to masons and anybody who's willing to be a brazen serpent, so to speak, and to snake people and to rejoice and to revel in getting over on people financially. Okay, they went and they slithered back to their snake pit in the low-income areas and sealed their alliance um, in order to maintain social control over every race not just the blacks. And we see this, you know, when the Irish, uh, you know, had a rebellion, you know, during the slave area. Um, the blacks were actually used to put down the rebellion. You know, this is something that is always, you know, they leverage both sides. Whichever side does more of your bidding, you know, you reward them a little bit uh, more, you know, and then you, you pull it when things get out of hand. All right, so the women's passions are redirected. Um, what they define as good stock is emphasized. And there's a special emphasis on drugging the black community. Okay, and this, this is part of why, you know, blacks are 17 times more likely to be diagnosed with a severe mental disorder in the UK. And remember, these are people who come from a culture of drugging. They know which drugs help them achieve what they want to do and which substances sabotage them. You know, they have a long history of it. Uh, you know, alcoholism, you know, they understand it. Uh, cocaine and marijuana and, and, you know, a lot of these drugs that psychiatrists use, you know, benzodiazepines, you know, SSRIs. 
they understand how these things affect individuals and communities and they understand how to manipulate science and it's not very hard uh, to you know fabricate evidence when you have a scientific community um, that is hell-bent to maintain power and sees itself uh, in a struggle against the religious hierarchies of the world. So we see in this, the Flint, Michigan case, the CIA bringing black to, crack to the black communities. We see a lot of cases where, you know, there are deplorable living conditions and people have an attitude which comes straight from the eugenicists, you know, who are scientific racists of they're black, so what? Listen to me very carefully. The reason why white people tend historically to get less time is not just because of repeat offenders or something like that. It's because white culture includes drugging in cults to advance the white race. That is historically a part of white cultures and white culture in civilizations. Rome, Greece, you name it. And drugs were given to the black community to make them fail. Okay? So on some level, the people who make the law, they understand that. They want blacks to fail still, but they don't want them to be on the rampage and completely unchecked. So, again, the justification behind the scenes for blacks, you know, it's not just because we want blacks in prison more. That's a part of it. But the major justification is, 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 is more cultural than that. It's we, white people, almost promote drug use in some of our civilized circles, you know? Whereas in the ghettos, you know, it is drugs are used by uncivilized brutes that need to be controlled. And when the white racists feel like being nice, they're like, oh, these people mean well. They just need direction, right? They just need the white man to, you know, tell them what to do and how to think. 